direct video for the Mr. FPGA is a way of connecting your setup to analog televisions without the need for an analog I.O. board. Just what is direct video? It's a method of outputting analog video with the HDMI port. You'll just need a compatible HDMI to VGA adapter. There are two main reasons why you might want to use direct video over the analog I.O. board. First, direct video allows you to use dual RAM, which can provide more memory bandwidth for games and systems that need it. The downside to dual RAM is that you lose the ability to output HDMI and analog video at the same time, a feature that's great for streaming and if you also want to capture video while playing a game. Another reason to use direct video is to get a 24-bit color signal, which is higher than the 18-bit signal produced by the analog I.O. board. This can result in better color accuracy, but it's a feature that's also rarely used by cores. And finally, Direct Video also allows you to connect your Mr. FPGA to an analog CRT without an I.O. board, thus saving you some money if you feel you don't need a full Mr. Kit. So now let me tell you what's needed to accomplish this. Keep in mind that I'm doing this from the point of view of a person who wants to connect through component. I do not have a TV with RGB, so I cannot demonstrate that, but I will at least describe what needs to be done with RGB. So to get Direct Video working, you will need a compatible adapter that converts HDMI to VGA. I'm going to be using this DAC from Ranky, which also has an audio out port and a micro USB port for power. But the adapter works fine with nothing plugged in through the USB port, and I did not notice any image quality difference whether a power adapter was plugged in or not. After obtaining this adapter, I did find out about its poor quality DAC, and there's a great document by Kuro that has testing results for different DACs. If you're looking for the best quality DAC, then I suggest you check out this document. A link will be in the description. I will say that by just eyeballing it, I did not notice a difference between this adapter and using component video over the I.O. board's VGA port. But if you want to see quality difference between different adapters, Kuro's document goes over actual testing and measurements to compare them. It's up to you to decide whether the higher quality DACs are worth the price increase and I suggest you read the document to help you make a decision. If you're using RGB, then you'll need an RGB compatible VGA SCART cable to your TV. There are also options for VGA to BNC if you need that instead. And that's it for the needed hardware with RGB. For component, things are a little more complicated. You will also need a VGA to component cable. You also need to perform a mod on the DAC that creates a sync on green circuit. For that, you will need a 1N4148 diode and a 330 ohm resistor. These needs to be soldered to pins 2 and 13 on the VGA port of the DAC. I will go over exactly how later in the video. If soldering puts you off, then you can obtain a direct video component adapter from LaserBear that has the SOG circuit built in. No need to solder anything. Check the description for the link to the adapter. Finally, there's the software setup. For both RGB and component, you'll need to modify the Mr. INI file, which I'll show during the setup process. So now that we know what's needed, let's start with the hardware setup. I'm going to first perform the SOG circuit mod that's needed for component. If you're using RGB, you do not need to do this. So you can skip this part. This is what needs to be done for the mod. You must first solder a 330 ohm resistor to a 1N4148 diode, then solder the diode to the VGA port's pin 13, and then solder the resistor to pin 2. And to do this, I'll first open the adapter to get into the internals. The tool I'm using to do this is part of an iFixit kit I have. Just pry the front cover where the VGA port is, then you can pull out the PCB. Then I need to examine the board to find the areas that represent pins 2 and 13. I first looked right behind the VGA port and that didn't look like a good way to get to the pins. Then I looked under the board and these points here look like just what I need. I just need to find out which one represents pin 13 and which one represents pin 2. To do that, I take a multimeter and check continuity between these dots and the pins on the VGA port. To help me get inside the VGA port's pins, I used a wire with the core exposed on each side. 
I inserted one side to a hole on the VGA port, then I took one of the probes with a multimeter and touched it on the other side of the wire. The other probe was used to touch each point on the PCB. If I heard a beep from the multimeter, then I knew that point represented the pin that the wire was connected to. I only needed to find the points for pins 2 and 13. I refer to this diagram from the Mr. FPGA documentation to help me with this. Through my testing, I determined that this one is pin 2 and this one is pin 13. Here's a document I was creating with my tablet to mark what pin is what during the continuity test. The next step is to solder the diode and resistor. I first checked to see how they would fit on the PCB. They definitely need to be cut down a bit, so I cut them down to a size that will comfortably fit on the PCB. So now to solder what I need, and this is the final result. I thought I recorded myself during the soldering, but it turns out I didn't. Better for you anyway, you now won't have to be subjected to my bad soldering skills. I also checked continuity to make sure I didn't bridge any points. So with the mod complete, I'll close up the PCB and then start editing the Mr. INI file for the needed settings. Before you set up the INI files, keep in mind that Mr. is an ongoing project and INI settings might change in the future. I'll provide a link to the direct video documentation so you can get the latest INI settings in case they change. I also highly suggest that you copy your current INI into a new INI preset to make sure it's backed up. Since direct video will be the main way we use the Mr. FPGA, we want the main INI profile to contain the direct video settings. You back up your current INI file by making a copy of the Mr. INI file and then rename it to Mr. Underscore and your choice of a four letter word with dot INI at the end. The profile will then appear in the miscellaneous options screen of the Mr. FPGA when you reboot. It will be named after the four letter word you chose in the INI file name. In my case, I used DVID. It's actually not a good name because this profile will not be used for direct video. I will be using the main profile for direct video. If you plan on alternating between a CRT and an HDMI television and you don't get a signal when booting up, that means you need to change the profile. But since you can't see anything, you won't be able to navigate to this menu to change the profile. Fortunately, you can use your controller to switch profiles. You switch profiles by holding the button that you assign to back and a direction on the D-pad. Each D-pad direction represents one of the four profiles that you can have. Here's a table that shows which direction refers to which profile. To set up the main profile now, I suggest we use a fresh INI file. This is because in my case, direct video did not work at all when I use my INI file that's been edited multiple times over the years. To fix the issue, I copied a fresh INI file from the Mr. FPGA GitHub and pasted it onto the main INI preset and made the appropriate changes to that. Everything worked fine after that, so I suggest you do the same. Check the description for the link to the fresh INI file. Okay, now for the INI changes you need to do. Open the INI file and look for the direct video setting and change that to 1. Then find the composite underscore sync setting and also change that to 1. That's it for RGB. But for component, you also need to change the VGA mode to YPBBR. Also, some adapters don't produce full range RGB, so you will have to set the HDMI range for them. In those cases, you will have to set the HDMI underscore limited value. On the Ranky adapter that I use, I set HDMI limited to 2. Save the file. Now connect everything together. This means that you take the VGA adapter and plug it into the HDMI port of your mister. Then take the component or RGB cable and connect it to the adapter's VGA port. Also, connect an audio cable to the audio port of the adapter. Connect the other end of the component or RGB cable and plug it into your television. And also connect the other end of the audio cable to your television or any external speakers you may be using. Reboot or turn on your mister and you should be getting a direct video signal now. If you plan on using both HDMI and direct video, Make sure your mister is turned off when switching between an HDMI cable and the direct video adapter. 
Under Mr. FPGA GitHub, we are warned that plugging and unplugging a cable from the HDMI port while the mister is still on can damage the port. So make sure your mister is turned off if you plan on switching between an HDMI television and a CRT with direct video. And that's it. You're ready to start playing your games over direct video. The setup is pretty easy for RGB. A component does have the annoyance of needing to solder the SOG circuit. But Greg from LaserBear has you covered with a component adapter that has the circuit built in. So if you don't want to solder anything, just get the adapter from his site. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.